So I'm a first generation farmer and this all started by just me wanting to raise a, a beef and, or, and a pig for my own benefit. And so I just thought, you know, I, I want some quality meat and I'm just gonna raise some cause I had a little bit of land and so I did and it turned out great. And next thing you knew, other family members said, hey, next time you put me in on that cause we want in on this. And so family members and friends and long story short, within a year or two, you know, we had four, five, six, eight beef. I was raising for everybody that was in, you know, my circle of influence. And so since I've always been an entrepreneur and I've always been a business person, I thought, man, I can raise 15 or 20 just as easy as I can raise six or eight or 10. And so the business kind of took off as a hobby. Uh, it, it started out as something personal, but turned into a hobby. But then it really took a big turn for us and it really changed for us when my wife was diagnosed with breast cancer. And so, we spent a good year and a half going through surgeries and chemos and radiations and all of this stuff. And finally, of course, we got the, the all clear. We were in remission and we were happy. And, but a few months later, it had all come back. And so that, that course of 18 months, anybody that's been through that knows how hard that is. And it was very hard on a family. And so when it came back, we both, my wife and I both decided, you know, we can't go through that again. It almost killed us, it was rough. So we began looking at alternative ways. So there is some management practices that we implement to try to produce a high quality beef while at the same time regenerate our soils and, and be uh, good stewards of this creation. So you can see the animals behind me. Uh, behind me here you can see some high tensile electric wire fence. Forage has a growth curve and so once it reaches seed head, it pretty much says its life is over. And once it's beginning to start to grow, it, it, it takes a while for it to hit. But when it gets into that middle stage, that's its rapid growth moment. And so we, we use herbivores to uh, manage our forage and we're using some uh, things of electric wire to give them the proper paddock size that, that they can get the best out of the forage. They can keep the forage in its rapid growth mode. People definitely want high quality meat and we want to you know do it in a sustainable regenerative way and we want to push this but of course if the product itself is not any good people are not going to promote it and they're not going to support it. So we use Angus, we use a very specific line of Angus, we use smaller Angus so that we don't have to have supplemental feed, we don't have to keep them fed up. We, we might call it low input that we can put on forages and they can fully sustain, reach their physiological size, they can put intermuscular fat into the marbling of the meat and do it all on forage. So of course our business model is to produce proteins that people can purchase that is not only regenerative to the, to the creation but also very beneficial and nutritious to them. So we raise beef, we raise pork, we have chosen specific genetic lines that can do that on the forages that we produce. So, so here we come 10 years later after all these events and so we have not looked back. We've, we've totally uh, dived into a holistic life and, and my wife is still cancer free to this day. We want things to be natural. We want it to be the way that uh, God has intended it and that's the model that we've chose. And so what we've seen over the course of 10 years of doing it is that that model definitely works. So we keep, we, we continue to educate ourselves, we continue to implement new things, but we use nature as our model. We're passionate about that and we believe that when you become passionate about it and you start implementing in your life, you're gonna see the benefits of it as well.